it's finally time to do a full review of my Soldner S100. This is the first new wheel that I've had. I own lots of wheels. I own most of the major brands and you know versions of the brands that uh, are sold in the United States. And uh, this is the only one that I would buy as a new wheel. So I want to go over some of the attributes of this wheel that uh, make it my favorite wheel. So first thing, we'll go through the, the least important things first. So first thing are the adjustable legs. And these are adjustable without a tool and they can go anywhere. You don't have to go into a pin or a slot. They're not indexed in any way. So you loosen it, you can make it go shorter or taller and then you tighten it up and it's there. So if you did, if you were into leveling, which you don't need to be, if you're into leveling, you can do that in a hurry and just set it. Other part are parts for it. So pretty much everything on this is an off the shelf part. The motor, the belt, the bearings, the parts inside the pedal are all things, like the things that you, if something goes wrong, it gets flooded or something, that you can go to Granger and buy the part. You don't have to go to the manufacturer, which means the manufacturer doesn't get to like keep up charging you for things that they're buying or getting made for their wheels, which makes repairing them easier, quicker, and cheaper. Uh, wheel head is a standard. I want to say it's a 14 inch wheel head. The pins are all the same, like the normal, like all the other wheels. The, you saw underneath there, it's, cast aluminum that's been milled so it's lighter it's not a steel frame which means it's not going to rust it's not painted this part is not painted the legs are painted i believe those are steel but the frame isn't going to rust it's not going to chip and peel or anything the deck is plywood it's sealed it's got a thick coating i'm believing of polyurethane and let's say this does get messed up let's say three four years down the road you've worn through the finish and you need to um, completely replace the plywood. There are three screws that go to thumb wing nuts there, a clip there, and one Allen screw on the flywheel to take off the wheel head and replace the deck. And you can use anything to replace the deck. If you wanted to get plastic made to it um, that fit those two, three holes, you can. I've done different plywood configurations. You can do pretty much anything you want, but the, the deck itself will last a while. It will need to get replaced. Um, that, that is a, a drawback, but it's lighter because it's not a steel deck. It's prettier. I mean, I'm, I'm more, more, more drawn to plywood than I am, you know, plastics and, and metals and stuff, you know, that are gonna get painted. The uh, organization of the top gives you the closest wheel to like side thing that there are in any other wheels. A lot of the other wheels are further out, which means you're further away from the wheel if you want to get closer. Um, people of different sizes are going to have issues with some of the wheels with how far they come out away from the wheel having to stretch and reach over that point. They do not come with a splash pan. For a splash pan, the Brents are an exact fit. So you, you will have to get buy a splash pan after you get your wheel or you know while you order your wheel. But they are an exact fit and you don't have to get them in the ugly green. You can get them in black so it matches the rest of the wheel. The uh, bat pins don't go all the way through. There's not a there's not a thumb screw on the other end. It is a threaded hole which is good and bad. Um, good in that you don't have anything underneath here to catch. Um, but you also have to make sure that these don't get corroded and stuck in. I put a little never sleaze on them before I popped them in and hopefully that will, that will keep them um, from freezing up inside. But all of that is pretty much, eh, you know, every wheel has these kind of things. It's not that big of a deal. The difference is the pedal and uh, nothing on the market is like this pedal. Um, it comes off, it's not permanently attached. So in terms of moving the wheel around, I don't know if you've ever had to pick up 
any wheel, you know, as soon as you pick it up, the pedal falls off and bounces on the ground. These you can unhook, it plugs into the motor, but the real, the real meat and potatoes of this whole jam is that it has the most speed control of any pedal on the market. And when I'm throwing, that's what's important to me. It's not how, how much this can center, and by the way, the S100 has a quarter horsepower motor on it. It's only a quarter horsepower. I've never stopped it. It's centered everything that I've put on it, but it's only a quarter horsepower. Part of that is because it's a DC motor and it's got this pedal. Now, I'm gonna push on the pedal. I'm gonna get it to go as slow as we can, actually. Should I, can I get this so that we see both the pedal and the motor? All right, or that pedal on the wheel. So I'm gonna push on it. And we're gonna give it a little beans and the slowness is the thing, right? Like every wheel will go slow, but not every wheel is smooth while it goes slow. You'll see them jitter and as they go. This is smooth and you know, this is pretty slow for a wheel to begin with, right? Like if this was as slow as it went, that'd be nice. There are some things and is it all the time am I doing this on every single pot? No, but when I wanna do it, I want my wheel to be able to do it. And we're gonna go real slow. Right, like that's that's even slower than a normal slow on a wheel, but <laughs> it goes further. We can go to almost the speed of a clock face. You know, we can go to the second hand, a minute per rotation. Oh, we can go further. Yeah, it's going that slow. Those kind of things I can't do with other wheels. And if you've noticed that. As I push, there is no dead spaces. There's no spots where it, like, it stays the same speed and then goes again. And that's not going to change over time. A lot of wheels will get dead spots in the areas where you use it a lot. Where you, you might have that, let's say, 100 revolutions per minute. And eventually, you'll get worn where you've got like 50, and then it goes to 100, and then it goes to 300. Because that spot there gets worn, and it just skips it. The way the coils are on this, you'll never wear through it. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go all the way through and it's a constant, a constant change and it's a smooth transition. There's also, there's nothing in the pedal that is measuring the force applied to the wheel. There's no um, potentiometer or anything that's going, oh, well, I need to go faster. If I was to grab this and stop it, that I could stop it, right? If I want it to go faster, I would push, you know, if I'm slowing it down, I would push the pedal more. It's like driving up a hill in a car. If you're in a city, you're not going to put cruise control on and just climb up hills. Because the cruise control is crazy in the city, right? So, same kind of thing is that if you need to go faster, you push the pedal harder. There's no ghost. There's no, and if, I don't know if you may not notice this, but there are pedals and wheels that, you know, when when you let go of it or you put pressure and it keeps going, it, it fights more. I'm not a fan of that. I want to be able to control the wheel. I don't want it thinking for me. I want to do, I want to, I want to put the input in and I want the output to come out. Um, it also goes really fast. It goes faster than most wheels. And uh, that also has its advantages for some things. Again, not for everything. This wheel is now about a year old it is not a quiet wheel. It's not a whisper, um, but it's also not gonna die when you put 25 pounds on it. It's, it's quiet at normal speeds. When you go faster, it's gonna be louder. But the pedal, the pedal is what makes it magic. Is this the right wheel for every place, every studio? Not at all. If you were gonna be putting in a teaching studio and you were gonna have 200 students in a week, this probably isn't the right wheel. Um, you know, a Brent, durable, you're not going to hurt a Brent, is probably more more the, the right wheel for that. If you're really budget conscious, this also isn't the right wheel. Um, it's comparable to other wheels that are, you know, rated for the same horsepower. It's a little cheaper than actually a lot of them, but it's not the cheapest wheel on the market. You know, that, something like a VL Whisper, the light one, you know, that is probably a better choice for somebody that's budget conscious. If you want the forever wheel that you're gonna love at your home studio for your whole life, you're not gonna grow out of it, you're gonna be able to move it around when you're 75 years old, that 
this is this is the wheel. I love the wheel. It's my it's my baby. Okay, that, that's my soul review. Okay.